with everyone, this is Mr. Brass, and today I'll be going over excuses pro-death advocates use to justify abortion. I call them pro-death advocates as a response to them calling me anti-choice, but anyway, let's get to the vid. What about rape, they say? They also say, you don't want people who are conceived in rape, right? As a person who has suffered from sexual abuse myself, I know somewhat what are the feelings of women who also go through it. I will note, however, that abortion doesn't unrape a woman. A woman is just as much raped before the abortion as she is after the abortion. Abortion doesn't solve any of the root problems women who've been raped have, and it just adds death on top of it, and it makes them have to undergo a surgery to their sensitive parts that were just violated, which is completely unacceptable, and the fact that they are pretty much coerced into doing this by society is unexcusable. Despite many pro-death advocates being anti-religious, or at the very least anti-Abrahamic, they tend to be very supportive of the biblical model of punishing a kid for the crimes of its father. Also, one must note there are people alive today who are rape babies, and no one is advocating that we should kill them because they were conceived through rape. Pro-death advocates make these kind of statements a lot. They talk about the possibility of a baby being unwanted or poor or too costly, etc. without ever thinking about the fact that we don't kill five-year-olds whose moms just decided she doesn't doesn't want them anymore, we don't kill homeless people, and a fetus costs a lot less than a born kid, but we don't kill the kids. As mentioned before, pro-death advocates tend not to be fans of solving the root problems of things, and are instead more interested in temporary comforts. They'll say kill a human being so they won't grow up in a bad home, but again, we don't need to kill kids in order to get them out of awful situations. We have other ways. Measures of things like consciousness and pain simply don't work as I believe consciousness is an illusion. There is nothing really to measure on that front. Pain, anyways, is subjective, as there are people who scream bloody murder over so much as a small paper cut, and there are people who can get stabbed and simply not really feel anything but mild discomfort. There is also people alive that are unable to feel pain at all, but we don't advocate killing them because they wouldn't feel pain by it. Objectiveness should be something we strive for in these cases. Pro-death advocates will say that I shouldn't care because I'm not affected by it. Well, I'm not affected by a majority of things going on in the world. Like, a guy who slaughters a woman in Saudi Arabia doesn't affect me at all technically, but it's absurd to say I shouldn't care about it. Pro-death advocates will also make the sexist remark of, You're not a woman, so you can't, ha you can't have an opinion or a say on this. First, I tell them to go fuck themselves. Second, I tell them the, fur the people most impacted by a crime aren't necessarily the ones who should get a say on it. I mean, taking their advice seriously, only drug addicts and dealers should have an opinion on drug laws. Which is absurd. Also, I tell them the women who manage the money for health care seem to think they can have an opinion and a say on prostate cancer. So this is me breaking even, and if all else fails, I just tell them I identify as a woman, and if they don't believe me, that's transphobic. Pro-death advocates say I shouldn't be telling other people what they should be doing with their bodies. I tell them, why not? As I do it for every other law. All laws tell people what they can and can't do with their bodies. To make this the one exception is special pleading. Also, pro-death advocates need to stop calling me a Christian. I am not a Christian, and I assign a very low truth value to the Bible. The fact that many religious people are pro-life only tells me that there is at least one issue that religious people are more normatively moral on. I'll say that even by the admittedly arbitrary standards our society has came up with, pro-choicers still fail as they go against the one culture cultural norm of don't kill human beings. Through a libertarian standpoint, abortion also ad violates the non-aggression principle, so I have even more reason to oppose it, and I will continue to do so. Well, that is all for today. This is Mr. Brass saying goodbye, and get walked.